Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee. This afternoon I have as my guest, one of my favorite people, Jay Fidel himself. Hi, Governor. From Think Tech. Oh, Think Tech Hawaii. I need to say that <laughs> slowly, more often, you know. I could never do the pick a pepper piper thing either. <laughs> but anyway, and today our topic is um, we are going to try and not predict, but talk about forecast, I guess, uh, politics for uh, next year, both on the state and federal level and, and, and with uh, just in general. And I um, thought that Jay would be the ideal person for this because as a co-host on uh, these programs, he uh, likes to take on various kinds of political issues. So, and especially, uh, well, we'll start on the national level, especially the, especially the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of fun these past two years talking about our president, Jay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your conclusion? Would you vote for him now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, it's so funny. You wake up, I mean, I, just when you think that the tweets can't get any worse, he comes out and he calls a witness that is, is uh, you know, cooperating with uh, law enforcement. He calls him a rat. And, uh, you know, uh, I, <laughs> what do you say to something like that? And what, where, at what point does the decorum mean anything? The, the, I think it was the Times uh, pointed out that that's a word they use in, in the underworld. Well, it's practically everybody's <laughs> been pointing that out, you know. <laughs> That's what uh, uh, um, Gotti would say about the yeah. uh, FBI informer. Yeah. The, que the question, I think, is uh, he's had a lot of trouble with people turning on him, and uh, it has been going well for him. Uh, he lost ground in the Saudi Arabia issue with, with the Senate, um, and, and the, you know, the uh, midterms didn't work the way he wanted. And so the question is, uh, is his credibility, his power? Undermine to the extent that in 2019 uh, we're going to see we're going to see him, uh, you know, get fragmented, well, more fragmented, uh, to see him uh, lose his influence over the the base and uh, over the Republican hmm. Party. Well, uh, you know, I I don't I personally I don't think so that in terms of the overall base because I think there are a lot of people out there who for various reasons, uh, maybe totally unrelated to his behavior, uh, agree with his, with his policies. And you, you know, there is a kind of, uh, there are a lot of, I guess what you would call them as uh, native, nativists, or people who, you know, don't like uh, new, and don't like immigration. They, they, they want America to be an America that probably never actually existed. Yeah, uh, you know, true. and so they are—they see him as the bullock against uh, against change, and you know, and he is, you know, he is. He's out there doing what they expect of him. Um, the rest of the country is going, you know, crazy, and the polls are actually showing though that he's losing some of the base, but he's keeping a core. He's keeping a core. Yeah, him. just like he doubles down on some of the things he said, some of the really indefensible things he said, um, they seem to double down on it too, and that that's very troubling because. You know, when you have a conversation with somebody like that, you, you really can't convince them. No, you can't. You can't. It's not even a rational conversation. And so I think there's a lot of people in this country, the base, nearly all of it, as we saw it before, um, that are going to support him no matter what he does, including shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue. Um, yeah. And I don't know why that is. I, I'm, I'm still, do you have an answer? I'm still wrestling with why people, an individual person or a group of people would do that when they know that he's been acting badly and they continue to double down on what he's saying. 
Well, I think there are like three different categories, at least, uh, you know, of uh, different uh, groupings. And uh, at least some of the people, well, some, there, there are, for instance, I, I believe, a, a lot of what I would consider actually uh, good people. I have a sister-in-law and a, and a brother-in-law who are totally enamored with it. In, not enamored. They, they actually would wish that he didn't misbehave. But because they, uh, their uh, religious viewpoints uh, sort of align with his actions, uh, meaning, you know, their, their idea of, uh, of what is moral and what is not in terms of abortion or, or other issues like that, um, just believe that, you know, he's the person for them. And, and so you have that grouping. Um, and I, I point out to them all the time that, uh, yes, but his, the way he acts and the way he does it just doesn't comport with uh, the rest of the beliefs that they have as, as good religious people. And, you know, their defense is sort of interesting because they point out, they, they say something, well, you, you don't know what kind of instrument uh, God would use. <laughs> and, and, and that's where I lose that's the really argument. That's stretching it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I lose the argument because I know at that point, uh, all right, let's just have a great Thanksgiving dinner, you know. Right. I'm not going to even very wise of you, John. <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I don't want to challenge that. But there are those people. Now, I think that some of them are also starting to realize that, uh, Maybe this is all a scam. So you got that group, you know. Then you got the other group, which is totally self-interested. I mean, this is all about business and the business that they happen to be in, uh, not necessarily business in general. Uh, and because some of his policies regarding foreign trade really hurt American business like the automobile manufacturers and the beef producers and farmers and many people actually, but um, where they do benefit, they're very strongly supported. And, and then there's the, uh, the third group, which is sort of, you know, falling apart. Um, where they just, okay, we've got to protect our uh, positioning. We're Republicans. We got to do it. So I, I don't know how you say that, but he seems to hold on to his base pretty well. Yeah, I just don't understand it, uh, and I'm I'm reluctant to have a conversation with somebody head on, uh, although maybe it needs that. I would love one. I, if, if any Trump person is out there, I, I, I took on Duke Iona, but that was when Trump um, uh, was just beginning. So maybe now, I don't know exactly where he stands, but he's got a radio show. So we had fun, you know, we, we did that exchange here on the, on this show, and then we did it on his radio show. And I wonder if he would have the same zeal, zeal now as he had then, especially after all the, uh, well, look at, look at what's coming out about uh, Russia. Even if uh, Trump, I mean, as a patriot, as a patriot, um, we all ought to be, as patriots, we all ought to be concerned. Um, and I'm, thank you, by the way, for letting me turn you into the host of this sure, program. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just a conversation. As, as a patriot, we ought to be really concerned when the FBI, when whatever Trump's actual direct involvement might have been, there is no doubt that the Russians use social media to tear up this country, to tear up this country. Right during the last election, they were sending uh, lies, essentially, to, for example, black voters about why they should stay home and not vote for Hillary and, uh, and uh, things that were, were being done. They were sending all kinds of propaganda to various groups who are actually being negatively affected by his policies and getting them not to vote. 
Um, it's like suppression, really. Yeah, well, it was suppression. And, and what's surprising about this is that he made that into such an issue, and it turns out the only people that have been suppressing voters are Republicans in uh, various states, or that have been suppressing the will of voters, like in Wisconsin, where you change the rules after an election in a lame duck session. That was incredible. You know, how do you do that and get away with it? Um, it's just raw power, you know? So what do you think of Mulvaney? What's he going to do for us, or what is he going to do for Trump, is a better question, uh, in, in 2019? They've had a lot of um, you know, revolving door-type uh, chiefs of staff over there. Um, is this going to be any better? Well, I, I tell you what, I think, uh, despite all of our feelings about President Trump and what he's done and what he may do in the future. The average person, most people, really would like, would not want anything bad to happen to the country. So there, just like when his prior uh, chief of staff uh, came in, you know, there's a lot of hope that maybe this one, might sort of right the ship, you know, might, might sort of do something. Mm -hmm. and, and he seems to have at least the, uh, the, 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 the experience and the skills. I mean, he's very highly taught of as an, as an operative, as a functionary, as a technocrat. And um, there's some hope that his no-nonsense style, um, you know, would, would affect this presidency. So. He's coming in with a with a lot of cautious goodwill. <laughs> you know? I hope so. I mean, it, it it is reminiscent of some of the others in the past where they came in and everybody said, you know, Kelly strong. He's he's going to keep. He's going to shape Trump up. He's going to make sure there's discipline in the White House. Um, he's going to ho hopefully uh, he, he's going to contain some of these tweets. Um, he's going to he's going to give some real valuable advice and. And it will be strong advice to Trump and improve Trump's administration. But that didn't happen. Yeah, well, he, you know, and uh, one, of the more, one of the interesting questions for 2019, what happens to Kelly now? Does Kelly come out and say something eventually, or, or Prius for that matter? You know, the, the prior the yeah, Kelly yeah. chief of staff, yeah. you know, do they eventually come out and say what it was really like? And uh, for the good of the country, um, you you know there there is a hope. There's a hope among some conservative Republicans that somehow somebody can tame the awful excesses of this presidency, or um, in, in, in a way, you know, there was an article written, and I trying to remember who wrote it about uh, the fact that Donald Trump may actually be uh, George Bush with bad manners. <laughs> you know, that a lot of his, uh, a lot of his uh, uh, policies where, where the rubber meets the road kind of thing are, are really uh, conservative Republican uh, policies. Now, they happen to be on the far end of the conservative spectrum, but they're in the spectrum. That's my point. And uh, I don't think that's true, because I think Bush was actually much closer to the being moderate than, than uh, this president. But the idea that his policies by themselves are uh, extremely uh, I think they're awful because I disagree with them, but I don't think that they are necessarily out of um, out of the spectrum. Mm. Uh, you know, Trump. I think Trump has done more damage, more damage to international relations. Well, that's where the rubber hits the road. Yeah, I agree with you. More, more damage to you know the the country's sense of self morality, uh, the country's uh, sense of being a welcoming. Statue of Liberty kind of country. Well, this we don't, I don't even we, I don't know about you, but I don't even recognize the, this country as the country that I learned about in the fourth, fifth, and sixth it's grade. All different. 
It's and, completely and different. I think Trump has done a lot to undermine our notion of representative government of democracy. Um, it's, not, it's not always that he did it himself, but that he encouraged other people to do well, it. Well, that's probably one of the more lasting effects. But look, we're going to take a short break now. And we will be right back to talk a little bit about the national scene and where goeth our president, and maybe get to see where goeth Hawaii under the newly elected or re-elected governor and state legislators. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We are talking to guests, guest co-hosts, conversational friend, and the rest of it, Jay Fidel, today. By the way, if anybody out there has a question for either of us, call us at 808-374-2014. Uh, I'll do it again. 808-374-2014. You know, we talked about Trump, and, and, and sometimes people like you and I get so involved with our Trumpite conversations that we don't really ask another question, is, and that is, so what should the, the loyal opposition do about it? What should Democrats? One of the most interesting statistics I just saw today was that the popularity of the Democratic Party, uh, people who strongly support them in this Trumpian era, is just about 3% higher than those that support the Trump. And so you have this, and the only difference is there, you know, with the Republicans and Donald Trump, there's a slight, there's a higher negative. Uh, I think it's 43 or something like that for, uh, to 36 for Republicans. But the Democrats are like 39% support and 35%, uh, you know, you're not doing a good job anyway. So mm -hmm. here we, you know, this is our state of our country. So what should a party that's uh, supposed to be, yeah. you know, the, what, do they, what should they do? How did, how did we get into a thing where the Democrats can't get together like this? I think it's because of the, the phenomenon uh, at the Trump election. Uh, where Russia and others were trying to divide and and create um, device divisiveness around the country among various groups. And I think we're still suffering from that. And we're suffering from what he's been doing in terms of dividing the country. So the result is that even the Democrats have been affected. They've been divided. They've been divided. They've been divided among themselves, between themselves. Uh, even you saw Nancy Pelosi had a little trouble getting it together. Uh, and and you, well, there are a lot of new Democrats who think uh, Nancy Pelosi might be apparently uh, the same old, same old. You know? Yeah. But but I don't think people I don't think people recognize the need, the value of getting together. I don't think they recognize uh, you know the old Ben Franklin thing about we we got to hang together or we'll hang separately. Um, and so the result is that. But are you know, they going to be any better? You know, well, here we are, just politically speaking, a child died just last week, I think it was. A seven-year-old. Yeah. Seven-year-old child because of the inhuman uh, um, treatment that we are, uh, you know, doing to, to, uh, to people who are seeking asylum in the great America. 
right? And, and, and yet, as awful as that is, you know, it got to raise some sh shackles and everything. Nothing changes. So where's the check and balance in all of this? Where are the policies that get that can reach over to the people that are, you know, currently dissatisfied but find themselves nonetheless supporting uh, Trump? I think the Democrats have to have to find a leader, and I like to mention a name. Sure, uh, Beto O'Rourke. Oh, uh, Beto O'Rourke. I see his name coming up more often all the time. And, and when he speaks and, and the media is going after him for sound bites, because he really gives good sound bites, um, I think, and he lost, of course, in Texas, but he's a winner. And uh, the, the, the dynamics of that election were a little strange, but uh, in the future, I think you're going to see him like a snowball gaining speed all the time. But isn't that, in a, in a way, the symptom, a symptom of what's wrong with the Democratic Party? That you have to reach out and get somebody who lost an election and call <laughs> them a savior, so. <laughs> you know, uh, call them a savior, you know, uh, or you got to deal with a Cortez. You think he might is, be a savior? Who, who, yeah, and I, you know, I find her very interesting, and I love somebody who fights like her. But I also know that uh, at, at least of this moment, eighty percent of the country would not. Well, that's true. Support her. Uh, you know, so w where is, what does this say about our democracy? Well, it needs a leader. It needs a leader. And Trump is not going to lead the whole country. Best he can do is 30 percent, you know. Um, so who, who is coming along here who will, be, who will be able to mount a real campaign in, in 2020 and, uh, you know, give him a run for his money and beat him? Uh, we don't have anybody. And the question is, how, how does the process work to emerge? Uh, last time, there were so many people on the stage, you know, and, and then we made this huge, gigantic mistake of, of letting him uh, be elected. Uh, wh what about do we now? actually Do we actually, you know, Jesse Jackson, yeah. who is a friend of mine and who I actually never voted for uh, on the national level because he was running against some of people who I thought would be really good, used to say over and over again, that when we say we need a leader, we are really giving up the victory already. What we need to create was, is a leadership, which he described as having leaders come together like planks on a boat or a ship, mm -hmm. and develop something that has some kind of mom, uh, a momentum more than uh, being based more on than some, a popularity or, contest or on personality. <laughs> yeah, really. But one of the things about Trump's the Trump phenomenon is he's created, I think, a personality-based politic. Absolutely. You know, and so we, we I, by the way, I love uh, Beto, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I broke a cardinal rule. I actually contributed to his campaign. <laughs> and uh, see, that's a cardinal rule. I, I'll give you a little insight. You know, cardinal rule for politicians is, you know, you never, you always ask for money. You never actually give it away, you know. And, but I did that. I did that because I really thought that he would be a good person. Uh, but, you know, is it something more? Uh, um, one strategic move, and, and, and what do we do? Well, the, in order to, to develop a leadership, I know that uh, Clinton, for example, uh, create, uh, be, you know, took over the, um, what was it, uh, Americans for Democratic Action, I think it was who, and actually created a, a, a basis. Uh, in a way, Trump inherited that. He inherited that and, and, and used it to his advantage tremendously, not the Americans for Democratic Action, but he inherited a kind of leadership base with all the, uh, what, what do they call, the, uh, the moral majority and mm -hmm. the rest of, and um, oh boy, how can I forget this? The Tea Party, Tea Party, which was the result of, of all kinds of actions. Can a party so splintered like the Democratic Party uh, go beyond the idea that diversity is good and actually show us how 
coming together is even better. I agree. Solidarity is Solidarity better. Solidarity is that's, even that's better. That's what it needs. And it, it, if better was the one, uh, then, then what has to happen is the Democratic Party has to get behind him. And people have to say, it's really valuable that we all get on the same page here. And if he looks like a good candidate, let's all back him up. And then you have the likelihood that he will surface as a Democratic candidate, and he'll run, and he's very good. He can deal with the kind of stuff that Trump puts out. He can run, he can run a campaign. You know, the problem with a campaign with Trump is if you're weak, Trump will find the weakness. He did that with Hillary Clinton. He found the weakness in every engagement, yeah. and he revealed it. And 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 mm. it was, you know, his criticisms and his tr his uh, tweets and all that very damaging to her. She, and she didn't know, in my view, she didn't know how to deal with that. I think O'Rourke would know how to deal with that. Well, okay, uh, you know, but then we have, and I, I, I'm kind of going through history a lot to this end. But then we have real Will Rogers, remember the famous comedian in the '30s who said, you know, um, what was it that he said? Said something all about, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, which means that I really have no party. I mean, I just, <laughs> we enjoy fighting with each other, you know? And so uh, that's our strength. And, and, and I don't know, it seems like we have all these constituents and these just all over the place. So mm. I hope you're right, I hope you're right. Now. What about impeaching Trump? Is that something the Democrats ought to do? They can't get the numbers, can they? Well, let's see. You know, should they even try? Well, one, one, one commentator on NPR the other day said there's only one thing worse than an impeachment. It's a failed impeachment. Well, <laughs> yeah. It tars unless, the people uh, who uh, tried. Uh, unless you are Bill Clinton. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was a good thing that happened. You well, know? And if you're Andrew Johnson, him, he's a lucky but bugger. you lost. You know? <laughs> yeah. it, not everybody's going to go down like Richard Nixon. And yeah. the, the, the point, though, I think for many Democrats is they're always wondering whether or not on the policies or whether Vice President Pence would actually be better. You know, and and uh, and um, you know, why not just wait it all out and let Trump disappear by himself? You, you think you think <clears throat> that um, that uh, that 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 Pence would necessarily? You know, it's not really the same ball of wax. What I mean is, you have to measure each president on his own merits. Well, one thing about and, Pence. And worry about Pence later. Uh, what, what I what I what I come up with is that when Mueller finally issues his report, which may not be right away, um, it's going to be pretty tough on Trump, and it's going to be at that point we're all going to be I think surprised, and we're going to have to measure Trump as to whether he is fit to lead or has done things that are so bad uh, that are you know well impeachable. <laughs> okay, well I, I you know I don't know, and we'll see what the future brings for us. Unfortunately, we. We're almost out of time, and we didn't get to Hawaii and Hawaii's problems. It's another time, but, another you know, show. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this unfurls, because they are, I just saw an article, people who are suggesting that it's better to let Trump stay in office and then just indict him the day he leaves office. You know? <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, that's maybe wishful thinking by another commentator. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much for tuning in with us. It was a fun session. I want to thank my co-host <laughs> guest, right Jay Fidel, and invite you all back to join us again with Talk Story with John Whitehead.